I've been in this situation. It's like you go through phases where you're eating what seems like a lot of protein, you're training, but you're still not building muscle. What exactly is going on? You're eating high amounts of protein, yet you're not like seemingly having adequate muscle protein synthesis. Well, I mean, there's a couple of very basic things I'm going to get out of the way, but there's a relatively new study that highlights something really interesting that might encourage you to just look at your lifestyle in general a little bit harder so you can understand, and it might explain some things. First and foremost, like the hierarchy for building muscle is going to be like stimulus from resistance training or training in general first. Like that is going to drive the biggest stimulus for building muscle, hands down. Okay. Second to that is going to be your protein intake. Okay, so prioritize your training first. A lot of people will be like, well, I just want to eat enough protein, but they really don't train hard or they train kind of like limpy, like not really that hard. Okay, so train hard, protein. But then another thing that people do forget is that the calorie baseline does matter. Like calories do influence muscle protein synthesis only if protein needs are met, right? So like if you are consuming protein, but your calories are low, you can build muscle, but it's going to be harder than if your calories are a little higher and your protein is high, right? So that's like the trifecta there, but there's a newer body of evidence that's super, super interesting. And it made so much sense to why I had a hard time building muscle at certain points in my life. After today's video, I put a link down below for element electrolytes. And now in case you haven't seen it, they have their sparkling electrolytes, like an actual can, a ready to drink can of electrolytes in a sparkling fashion. So it tastes like a soda, but you're getting the electrolyte effect. So if you're in a caloric deficit, you're trying to cut or you're trying to build muscle, but stay lean at the same time, these things are amazing because you can sip on them during your workout and it feels like you're sipping on a soda, but you can also sip on it throughout the day and it just tastes really good. But they still have the same 1000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium and 60 milligrams of magnesium. Totally fasting friendly. They won't break a fast. You could have them before your fasted workout. They also have their regular packs, which of course I still use all the time. Like that's my baseline. But anyway, that link down below gets you a free variety pack with any purchase. So free variety pack, all you got to do is make a purchase and you get a sample variety, uh, excuse me, a sample variety pack with each flavor. So you got like a citrus salt, which is like lemon lime. You've got a watermelon salt. You've got a grapefruit salt, all these really good flavors. So that link, go to drinklmnt.com slash Thomas, drinklmnt.com slash Thomas. And it's in the top line of this description. Make sure you check out their sparkling flavors. Okay. American Journal of Physiology. This is rodents, but trust me, there's a lot of data to also back this stuff up in humans. What they did is they took mice and they induced inflammation. They caused inflammation. And the way they do this is they uh, use lipopolysaccharides, which is LPS, which comes from the gut, which is what creates inflammation in our gut in a lot of times in the first place. So it's how they induce inflammation in rodents and possibly even in humans in certain cases. Okay, so what they did, they found out when inflammation was increased, leucine, which is the amino acid in protein, the sole amino acid that is associated with muscle protein synthesis. It is the primary one. The other amino acids are important for building, but what stimulates and kickstarts, it is the boss of the whole situation is leucine. They found that leucine had no effect. It did not induce muscle protein synthesis like it normally does. Okay, but here's what's super, super wild. If they preloaded these mice with a high amount of glycine, which is the amino acid that you're going to find in collagen or in gristle or ground beef. Like it's the, it's the, the connective tissue, right? If they, they did it a high dose, it was like one gram per kilogram. So it was like, in, you know, for these mice, it was a decent amount. If you did that in humans, it'd be a lot. And it would probably be safe, but it's a lot. Anyway, point is when they did that, that buffered against the inflammation where the leucine then increased muscle protein synthesis 51%. So without the glycine, the inflammation blocked, blunted the effects of leucine on muscle protein synthesis. But glycine protected and made it so leucine could still do some of its job. That is incredible. So it's like you're eating all this protein, you're trying, you're trying, you're trying, but your lifestyle, your inflammation, your levels of stress, all this, whatever is potentially going on, especially if you're like really sick and you really have something going on, that's going to impact your ability to build muscle.
But most importantly, like leucine is what's going to stimulate mTOR and allow like rebuilding in general. So in the case, particularly in the case of people that are in really bad situations where muscle wasting is becoming a thing, glycine could support it so that leucine can actually do its job. So maybe uh, glycine deficiencies and low levels of glycine are making it so that it's harder and harder and harder to maintain your muscle. It's almost like you're shrinking. So the researcher said in this study, and I quote, glycine may represent a promising nutritional intervention for muscle wasting. So the context of this study was definitely more about muscle wasting, but we can apply it to the performance side being like, wait a minute. So when there's inflammation, it seems as though protein synthesis is being kind of reduced a little bit. So that's where sometimes we have to factor in, ha, huh, am I training too much to the point where my inflammation is so high that maybe leucine's losing some of its effectiveness. But more importantly, is your glycine level where you want it or where you need it? Are you adding collagen in if you need it? I would recommend it. It's, I know a guy, I'm just gonna tell you a quick story. He is a special forces operator, like, we're talking serious uh, CAG. If you're an army guy, you know what CAG is. Big time real stuff, he's retired now. The dude is, he doesn't take any supplements. He won't take supplements, like, except for collagen. And the guy is the strongest person I know as far as like context, he's not a power lifter. He's insanely fast. He was a pro rugby player on top of it. Point is, is that like, he's like, you know, the one thing I make an exception for is, is collagen because it's really hard to get enough in the diet, right? So ground beef is great, but I do think collagen supplementation is important, okay? Putting all that aside, there was a recent study that came out in 2024. I've talked about this in a couple of videos already. Super fascinating because what they found is that when you take in just whey protein, you actually deplete, you drain, your glycine levels go down. So it's like, even though you're having leucine, you're like maybe reducing this glycine baseline so you should add some collagen in. So they actually found that when they had people co-ingest whey protein and collagen together, it would increase the glycine levels, obviously, which would allow for more connective tissue recovery and more overall muscle protein synthesis too. Sort of. I digress because that's a different topic for a different day. Point is that when it comes down to muscle protein synthesis and human like muscle progenitor cells, which are required for building muscle, we are seeing in lots of bodies of literature that glycine is increasingly important. So increase that glycine baseline, eat the ground beef, eat the collagen protein, get all cuts of meat, not just a choice cut. So if you're at this like hurdle, you're like, and you've been living really stressful and maybe you're like, I don't know, getting sick a lot, you're overtraining. It is such a cheap, low hanging fruit. Even just take a glycine supplement or magnesium glycinate that has glycine in it. Get the glycine levels up and see if that kicks you out of that little rut. It's, it might be negligible, but it's also worth a shot. I'll see you tomorrow.